Hello, my name is Alex, but I'm also known as Chibi Yuto, and welcome to the last, yes, the last video review of Clamps Doujinshis. In this video, I'll be doing the review for Doujinshi number 22. It is the final Doujinshi release by Clamp. It was a Doujinshi about Devilman. Devilman is a dark fantasy manga and anime series that was created by Go Nagai. Uh, the anime project actually came first and the manga version uh, that was drawn by Go Nagai debuted in a Weekly Shonen magazine only one month before the anime premiere. Both ran from 1972 until 1973, so around one year. The anime series had a total of 39 episodes and the manga series had a total of 5 volumes. Devilman had a huge cultural impact in Japan, especially due to its controversial violence content. It also inspired a lot of artists, including Clamp. This doujinshi came out on April 21st of 1991, only 5 months after the last uh, doujinshi release, which was the final volume of Shoten, Shoten 6. By the time this was released, there were uh, still 6 members and they were full on working on at least 4 series at the same time. Digo Veda, Tokyo Babylon, uh, Nijun Menson Yonegai was on its final stages and Gakuen Tokei Dukarion. There were an other uh, small works, uh, works that didn't really became a full series, some uh, one-shots. Also, the other members, Tamayo Akiyama and Lisa Sei, had their own series too, so they were pretty busy at the time. Since Clan's popularity was starting to grow at the time, and they were already working as professional manga artists for two years, uh, they put out a lot of copies for this one. So. Uh, because of that, it is really, really easy to find. It is probably uh, the easiest doujinshi uh, that you can find online. So if you ever search for clamp doujinshi, you will probably find this one uh, very easily. The book's finishing is really pretty. I'm going to show you in details during the review, but you can see that it's a hardcover book. There is a, a leather finish on the... Um, on the cover and they really uh, made a very nice last doujinshi work and it was a conscious decision to be the last one I'm going to tell more about that during the review it's not like it happened to be the last one they really knew that this was going to be the last time or rather they, they knew they would be taking a break and it was, in fact, a break because uh, in 1994 there was um, a one independent publication that you can call Doujinshi. Is the Clamp in Wonderland, uh, Doujinshi, the famous uh, Jojo Bizarre's adventure uh, Doujinshi that people often talk about. But for most people, when you talk about Clamp's Doujinshi works, they only relate to these uh, 22 books that they release between 1987 and 1991. So without further ado, let's check the review for the last clan doujinshi. This is the front cover. There is a nice uh, holographic hot stamp effect. This is the book title is called Shinkyoku, which means divine comedy. Uh, here there is a blurb and Clamp's uh, signature. Uh, I tried to translate this blurb and I think it's about the story. It's not um, a message from, from Clamp or anything. Uh, the cover has a leather finishing and it's a hardcover. It's, uh, I think it's the only, it, it, it actually is the only doujinshi that they release with a uh, hardcover. The main illustration has a very nice glossy effect. Uh, this is the back cover also with um, hol the same holographic hot stamp effect in a winged egg 
uh, wings are sprouting from the egg. Here it says Divina Comedia in Devilman by Clamp. You can see better here the leather effect on the cover. Uh, this is the book spine, so you have the book name Shinkyoku Divina Comedia in Devilman by Clamp or Divina Comedia. I don't know the correct pronunciation. Um, it seems like a thick book because the pages are very thick, uh, but it's actually not that big. Um, there are a little more than 80 pages there's actually 81 or 82 pages but the pages are very thick which makes the book uh, look thick it, it has a very nice binding uh, so it's the the it's definitely a really nice book so let's open it here at the very uh, first pages, you have the same uh, drawing from the back cover, uh, and there is the some blurb here at the top. The paper is looks really nice. There's a different texture to it. Then there is a color page. This paper is actually thinner than the rest. And I assume because of the the color drawing. This is the book title. I think this is the same. No, it's actually a different text from what it appears here. I don't know what it says, unfortunately. Then we have this kind of looks like a splash page. Um, color spread. Here you have some blurb as well, presented by Clamp. Here you have the release date, 1991, April 21. Here we have the index. Um, all members, all six members contributed to it. However, Mick Nekoi and Lisa Say were the two uh, of them that contributed the most. But we do have contributions from all six members. Um, there is one final story by Okawaranase and Mokona Papa. Uh, the cover art, the cover color, here it says cover color was by Mokona Papa. The back cover, the back color was by Mokona as well. Then the color from pages six and seven, which are these two, was done by Mick Nikoi. Um, then there's uh, some illustrations in the in the in, in the pages. And here in the middle of the book, there was were made by Mokona Papa. The book binding um, design, uh, everything about the book, the the composition, the the layout was made by Okawananase. And uh, the design assistant was Satsuki Igarashi. It's really cool to have that information. So the first story is by Mick Nikoi. It's just one page. I added um, post-its to guide myself. Um, the first stories, this first, uh, actually most of them are, are gag stories, are comedy stories. Then the very last one by Mokona and Okawa has a darker tone. So these first stories here, they are very humorous. And you, you can see what I meant that the pages are thick. They are very uh, well thick in the texture. I don't know if you will be able to see, but um, it's not a regular paper. It's a very thick paper. It looks really fancy, very high, high quality. Uh, the second story is again by Mick Nikoi. The third story as well. They all uh, have like, they have one page so far. Then we have one by Lisa Say. 
first one back to Nick Nikoi over here they're all like one page stories very short gag comics this one by Lisa Say and it's actually uh, bigger there are three pages it ends here then back to Mick Nikoi again Lisa Say for this first few stories they keep switching between Mick Nikoi and Lisa Say this one Mick Nikoi as well here we have some clamp mascots making an appearance again Mick Nikoi now we have a Mokona Papa for a change she's doing a gag story as well Tamayo Akiyama first story by her it's actually a three pages story sorry four yeah four pages it ends here then we have uh, Satsuki's Garachi only contribution um, she contributed with this uh, novel or this uh, short story in text format then back to Tamayo Akiyama this is the two pages and her last contribution for this doujinshi back to Mik Nikoi two pages it ends here now to Lisa Say this one page Mik Nikoi one page you can see the six members of Clamp here at the last panel Lisa Say again with a longer story this time four pages it ends here and now Mokona Papa so two pages for this one it ends here and again Mokona Papa one page this uh, angel looks very much like the one we see in Tokyo Babylon uh, illustration I think for the city comic cover page cover art now we have uh, the clamp newspaper section here is where they um, they, they say uh, the clamp members talk to the readers uh, they give news uh, whatever's happening in their lives so it's a a break a segment so that's not a it's not about comics it's about them speaking to the readers so there's this one text about the Man. I think they are saying uh, how much they like it why they chose to make a doujinshi about it uh, here's there's a column called Ososume which is like recommendation uh, it's about it's about Satsuki Garashi I don't quite know what she's recommending here though um, then there is a text about the fact that this is their last doujinshi um, they are actually saying that they are taking a break here uh, so it was a conscious decision it wasn't random it wasn't or it, it's not like they didn't know that this was going to be the last one they did know uh, they plan it this way uh, when this was released they already knew that they would be taking a break uh, and I tried to, um, to translate this text using Google Translator uh, translators image translation tool which is really helpful and it seems as though they are saying that uh, given the amount of work that they have been dealing with their uh, professional work and also uh, I, I, I caught I caught some um, there's a part where they say that there might be some restrictions so I wonder if they had to you know to in order to before signing a, 
a contract with a publisher before making a deal, maybe they had to leave completely or at least for a while the doujinshi world because there could be some conflict of interest or um, yeah like uh, some restrictions as they said so um, maybe it was they, they had to do it in order to uh, pursue their professional career so here they're explaining um, that they're taking a break uh, so they ask for readers support and over here you have the um, the, the client newspaper system so they're uh, giving instructions of how you can subscribe to it to receive a newspaper where you would get uh, the updates from Clamp. It's similar to Clamp, uh, Clamp's official website but before the internet so it's kind of like a newspaper. And at the bottom they once again are, are mentioning that this is the, the, the last one that they will be taking a break. Um, it's interesting because uh, they said, apparently they said that the whole book was done in five days uh, from what I could get. There is a part here that they said uh, that it took five days. I might be wrong, but uh, this is what I, I understood, which is pretty likely considering that there were 80 pages and six people working on them. I would say it's possible. They're also mentioning the uh, an error in the first volume of Tokyo Babylon where the cover art did not came out did not come out as they uh, anticipated I I had never seen this mistake before I'm very curious to see for to, to look for uh, what it, what it might look like this first volume of Tokyo Babylon they are apologizing they saying that they're, they're going to fix it um, but it's I'm curious to see uh, what this uh, this mistaken cover of Tokyo Babylon Volume One looks like. Um, here they are listing uh, some shops. I think shops that are that have uh, client products. Here there's a schedule. You have information for uh, Rigoveda, Tokyo Babylon, uh, Niju Mensoni Onegai. Ducarion, all the works that they were doing, uh, they they made, uh, uh, they are, you know, informing about release dates and where it's going to be published. Uh, here is uh, about the comics, so which comics were released. So we had uh, The Raid, which is a Tamayo Akiyama uh, work, Cluster as well, Niju Mensoni Onegai, Rigo Veda, Tokyo Babylon CD comic, etc. Here are the media mix. They are um, announcing the the OAV, the the uh, Goveda OAV, uh, the comic, the sorry, the CD, audio CDs for combination. Uh, I think for me, Niju Mensoni Onegai. Anyway, there, it's all the the information about the the CDs and the the audio dramas. Um, this is really interesting because it's a receipt uh, from, I think, from the person who bought this doujinshi and the date here says uh, Ju June 29 of 1991, which is actually only two months after this came out. So it really looks like this is the receipt that the person got from the bookshop or whatever shop that they had it and I keep it here um, okay and now on to the final story uh, this is by Mokona Papa and Nanasi Okawa it opens with a few color pages the style resembles a lot the early illustrations of X uh, the the art style, the background, um, the use of airbrush this way, it's very similar. Really pretty color spreads. And here you have a, what looks like a darker tone 
or more like a serious story uh, as opposed to the previous ones which were all comedy and it's nice because it comes right after the break like there's a a breathe here when you have the news and then they switch to a darker tone it's really well uh, thought and you can see here uh, Mokona and Okawa's collaboration shining through here uh, the, they are the they are at the Harajuku uh, subway station which is very famous for these billboards and they are showing Tokyo Babylon in a very nice um, crossover or Easter egg for the fans they were already doing it back then of course it looks really well composed and then the mood shifts even more it gets really dark and these uh, these pages here uh, remind very much of Rigo Veda, Tokyo Babylon and X looks really cool very dramatic and tragic and we are reaching the end and this is the final page very dramatic <laughs> and these are the two last pages which is very similar to the opening pages I don't know what the text says unfortunately actually is the same yeah it is the same text so they just repeat it and back over again so just out of curiosity I brought the first doujinshi that I covered and the first doujinshi that they released just so you can see that they have come a long way so the first one has you know soft cover uh, not to say that it's not nice it definitely looks nice but um, there's definitely some evolution here in terms of uh, independent publication now they they have uh, made it hardcover the pages are are very um they're very thick their the quality is, has increased the book binding looks perfect so and it's definitely a reflex of of the fact that they uh they had uh better ways to invest they have better uh income to to invest in a very nice uh book to to close off this important phase to them um, so that's it uh, it's very it's both it's a bittersweet feeling it's exciting but also sad to make this uh, the final video I hope you've enjoyed this and yeah I hope you liked it so let me know your thoughts what you think about it in the comments below and thank you for watching Hey, thank you so, so much for watching this and any of my previous 21 videos. This has been a great journey. Uh, it was longer than I expected. I originally hoped it to last for a year uh, or something like that, but it actually lasted for almost two years. Well, you know, real life, sometimes we don't have the proper lighting or uh, the environment is too loud. so. Forgive me about that, but I did my best. This has been a great experience for me because I got to learn a lot about these doujinshis as I revisited them. And also with your help, you helped me to understand better some uh, aspects of it. Many of you commented on and uh, uh, clarify some questions that I had and, and I learned a lot from that. And I'm sure that I will keep learning for any future viewers that 
uh, are going to watch these videos and and share uh, anything important or uh, curious or relevant that I might have missed. I really hope that this uh, these doujinshi reviews have been useful to you. It's been a joy to make them. Uh, I hope you are going to appreciate and admire Clamp's work even more from now on. And I do have uh, what I call pre-Clamp doujinshis. Uh, those were released before Clamp started the group. So. I have, uh, there's a lot of uh, Senseiya ones uh, and they were not necessarily all 12 of them or all four of them together. Uh, sometimes they will work uh, separately. So this one, for example, has Tamayo Akiyama, Nanashi Okawa, and Mignikoi and Mokona Papa. This one, for instance, uh, is from Okawa Nanase and Tamayo Akiyama's uh, group. So the other members are not here. Sometimes they would make uh, guest appearances, so there might be something from Nikoi or Mokona or Satsuki Garashi here. But by default, these were not clamped doujinshis, if you know what I mean. Uh, this one is uh, Mokona Papa, uh, but there could be some guest appearances as well. So I have uh, 10 of them. There are more, I'm still hunting for these because it's really hard to find since they are not by clamp. So uh, I don't even know about their the total uh, number of of doujinshi that they they put out before they form clamp. So it's a, it's very challenging to find these, especially because some of them are even older than the clamp ones. So I might do uh, video reviews of them at one point, but this is a future project. It's not going to be something I'm going to do right now. And I guess it also depends on how much interest there is for them. And well, just in case I have the honor of having Clum Sensei watching these videos, I would like to send them a message. Clump Sensei, it's more sticking a sakuhin wo, sakuse shite kudasatte, kokoro kara, kansha no kimochi wo, moshi agemas. Arigato gozaimas. And lastly, I have a website about Clan. The address is chibiyuto.com. I would love if you can pay me a visit there. See you next time. Bye.